I'm Jim Furyk, and this is my U.S. Open. Dad took me to the U.S. Open, actually at Marion in 81, so I would have been 11 years old. And I took a friend with me, and it was the first time in my life. Dad said, I had a watch on, he said, you got two hours. I'll meet you right here at this tree, go. And we were, you know, like you know, in the candy store. I've never, never been kind of allowed to just go run around. So, you know, who'd we go follow? We followed Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholas. And no, we didn't see a darn thing because that's who everyone was following. But uh, two short little kids and everyone had those boxes with the mirrors that you could see up over. And, you know, we were trying to poke our heads through and, and, and follow. So uh, I ran around the course for two hours and that's who I wanted to see. Dad's a very good teacher. I don't think he gets the credit that he ever deserved throughout my career. You know, he realized early on that I'm not very mechanically inclined. So we don't really work through mechanics at all. We work through shot shapes and ball flights and feel. And, and I've talked to some teachers and said, man, if we could have got a hold of you when you were a kid and we could have got your swing looking a certain way, think about what could have happened. And I said, yeah, I, you know, I could be bagging groceries somewhere. Probably. It's, it, and, oh, no, 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 no. I said, I know what, what it feels like to me and I know what I'm capable of both physically and mentally and I'm glad dad wasn't one of those teachers that tried to make everyone look the same. And so you know, I think my fundamentals and my basics of golf are very similar to everyone else. I just get there a little different way and he allowed me to do that and we kind of refined what I had to work with which uh, I'm very appreciative for because I think that's why I'm in, in the position. That's why we're sitting here talking about the U.S. Open in 2003. I just kind of had it in my mind that I know the U.S. Open's difficult and I know it's a challenge, but I, I felt it really favored my strengths, hitting the ball straight, hitting a lot of greens. Uh, I always felt that I was mentally tough and that if you had to grind out pars and even par was a great score, I could do that. There was a nickname that kind of the media came out with, the, you know, the grinder. Guy that didn't give up and always grounded out. And I don't think you could ever really tell whether I was finishing 50th or first. You know, I, I was just working hard. Got in early, I uh, wanted to play Sunday, but the weather was awful, it was blowing 30 miles an hour. Just decided to kind of get some rest and get ready for the week. I played 18 holes on Monday and walked off the golf course and looked at my dad and I said, I, I love it. This golf course suits my game. It's gonna be about hitting fairways. It's not gonna be a length issue. This is my kind of US Open. I started on the back nine, and I played a terrible first side. I shot two over, and I thought I was ready. Now, I was coming in here to win this golf tournament, and, and I'm just, you know, this isn't what I expected. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, it's still the U.S. Open. I know the scores are low today. I'm looking at the, the leaderboard. But you know what? If you shoot even par in the U.S. Open, it never, it never hurts you. You can always come back. Even if you shoot one or two over, you can always win a U.S. Open. I think when I made the turn, it's like you get to forget about one, and now it's like a new nine holes. Let's go shoot a good number on the side and see what happens. And so I was able to kind of turn that, and, and I think realized a little bit that I was trying to shoot a good score. I wasn't doing the things I needed to to shoot a good score. I relaxed a little bit, and I went and played that side a little bit in a better frame of mind. I remember getting on a roll. When that happens, you just try to step out of your own way and let it go. Birdie in three, and then four, and, and some tough holes in there uh, to do it on, uh, to kind of get it back to even par, and then continue to make a couple birdies, and then you're under par. Well, it, it allowed me to relax and, and just go play golf, and, and all of a sudden I turned you know, a, a back nine that I, I felt like I was in trouble to, okay, I shot three under. When I'm playing well, it's really nice to go late early because you, you get a bite to eat, you go to sleep, right back up and right back on the golf course and you try to draw from the positive energy you had the day before. The one day that I remember the least out of all of it is, is Friday for one reason and it's the lowest score. do that very often in US Open. That's a recipe for bogey-free golf, which is hard to do. 
just had played 27 phenomenal holes of golf. And so uh, in the U.S. Open, I was excited for the weekend. At that point, VJ and I really hadn't separated from the field that much. All the scores were stacked up pretty good after day two, and, and scores were low. And you also, from my experience, I also knew what was about to come on the weekend, too. That, that golf course, they were going to dry it out, it was going to get firm and fast, and it was going to become more of a, a U.S. Open. I saw the scores coming in. That golf course was totally different. Hard hole, actually. One of the toughest holes on the course, I thought. So that's a big deal to be able to make birdie there. You don't get many opportunities in U.S. Open to make birdie. This was one. Just keeping the momentum going on that side. Jim Furyk, chance to take the outright lead. Can't win a U.S. Open without making a bunch of putts, and I putted uh, super solid that week. Yes, sir. Jim Furyk, double digits under par. When you're playing good holes, you're making birdies, you're separating yourself from the field a bit. It's a settling, it's a calming effect. And so now we're into 36 holes where I'm, I'm playing well under par. It's part of the U.S. Open. You're, you're going to make bogeys. And you try not to turn bogeys into doubles, doubles into triples. I played a bogey-free round on, on Friday. That just doesn't happen. You know, I can do it on tour once in a while. It's really difficult to do at U.S. Open. So part of U.S. Open golf and, and still knowing that even par is a good score. I think it's more, of a, in my opinion, there's mechanics and there's stuff to it, but it's an art and it's a, a feel and a vision and being able to see the line that the ball is going to travel on and, and then kind of not only see it in your mind, but then make it happen in reality. Jim Furyk's birdie attempt coming through the shadows. And looking like it's going to bury itself. Woo! Those are the ones that you're, you're trying to get the line, speed, cozy it on up there and get out of it with a, a par and hit a good putt and it goes in. So that's a bonus. I mean, that's kind of a little whipped cream on top for that one. We were bunched up pretty tight, but now we're starting to separate a little bit. And, and as you would expect, and under par on Saturday, at U.S. Open's getting it done. To me, that was the big moment. It's a really quick putt. Just trying to cozy one in my mind. Let's cozy it down there. Let's get the speed, get the speed. How about now? Look at that face, that expression of determination on Furyk. Thinking maybe it's my time now after 32 major championships. He is in excellent position. And we've got a new U.S. Open record for low 54 holes. <laughs> Uh, they kept the camera on me and I had like the, uh, after the round was over. So I guess that, that'll tell you how I was feeling at that moment. I went into the event extremely confident and then to see things go so well and you know, get myself in position. I felt ready, but I'll, I'll say it's still you have to sit on that big lead and think about it. And so, uh, it was really nerve-wracking, I'll say that. It was, a, it was a rough morning. Just the nerves, the energy, and the anticipation, you know, just wanting to get to the golf course and be able to play. For some reason on Sunday, I, I just didn't want to look at the television, but I could hear it. And when it came to my name, Johnny Miller said it was my tournament to lose. And I literally went, <laughs> like, oh my God. Trying not to react because people heard it, and I went, my tournament to lose. I go, Jesus, that's like the worst attitude I could ever have. I mean, it's my tournament to win. Like, I'm leading this thing by three shots. We welcome you to Olympia Fields Country Club once again. Happy Father's Day, everybody. I had a hard time telling my dad Happy Father's Day that morning because I knew I was going to lose it and, and kind of break down. And I, I couldn't get it out. I couldn't get it out. Finally, we got to the course, and I told him. With the anticipation, with the emotion of the day, with how nervous I was, I knew it was going to be uh, pretty emotional. I knew the golf course was going to play tough. It was firmer and faster, and, and so you know the game plan is to be really patient, to realize that you're going to make some mistakes. It's a U.S. Open, but I knew if I shot anywhere near par, just no chance. 
that anyone's going to catch me on that golf course the way it was set up. With a par putt. Uh, the ball's kind of up against the fringe, so uh, it's always awkward. You have to feel like you kind of have to lift the putter a little bit. Huge, huge boost. And I did the same thing on five. If about a six, eight footer that was really breaking a lot, like a curler that kind of got up to the edge of the hole and where it looked like eh, it stopped, and I was thinking, no. <laughs> Even I start laughing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, okay, things are looking up. When, when a putt stops on the edge and falls in for you in that situation, you're thinking it's your day. Or what I'm thinking is try not to play conservative, right? Let's make good decisions, but let's stay aggressive. Let's make good aggressive golf swings. Go play a good nine holes and there is no chance they catch it. I mean, not, now you're just, and, and not only is that, it's, it's less and less folks that are getting closer. I mean, they're sliding off the leaderboard. And so just keep playing what you're doing. Keep putting it in the fairway, keep hitting it on the green, and, and you, you can't be caught. I have basically like a full pitching wedge into that. Kind of club you better be aggressive with. Go to the right of the hole and catch the slope coming back to the hole. Ball started kind of in the center, left center of the green, just had a nice lazy draw right at it. Beautiful golf shot. And I started walking right away. It was a big, big, big shot. Perfect yardage and, and just made a really good swing. All of a sudden we're back to four and I've got four to play. Well, I haven't had the luxury of having a four shot lead in my career, say on the 18th tee, and so to do it, you know, I'm going to win my first major at this point. It's it's a cool feeling. Hitting my approach shot on 18, I've never had that big of a lead again. So it's always been high stress, you know, trying to make birdie and try to knock it in the middle of the green, get out. You know, I've had two shot leads, but always with trouble. And so, you know, there's always been a been a stress point. So to, to sit out there and, you know, hit a seven iron and take the walk and kind of soak it in is really cool. Yeah, you can tell I'm tearing up, actually. Ninth on the career money list. It doesn't matter when you can put your name on that trophy. And that's what Furyk has waited for, and that's what is about to happen. A total of 272, and Jim Furyk has his major championship. The 103rd U.S. Open champion. To win on Father's Day, to be a father for the first time. To have mom and dad there. You wrap all that up, that's a lot of emotion. Who would have known? The, the only tournament I ever attended before I went to college was the U.S. Open, so uh, pretty cool. Little kid running around the course, and and uh, I never never thought about it. Turned out being the uh, the one at one, so it's the crowning moment of my career, and always will be. Um, I added a senior U.S. Open to it uh, later in my career, but winning that trophy and and it'll always be the the greatest moment of my career.